Bread in Christ, the Lord be with you. I welcome you to my reflection for the fifth Sunday of Lent. And the theme of my reflection is, The Master is Here. Our readings are taken from the prophecy of Ezekiel, chapter 37, from verses 12 to 14. From St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, from verses 8 to 11. And from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 11, from verses 1 to 45. Beloved in Christ, the predominant theme around which revolve the three readings of today is God's power, orchestrated in the resurrection to newness of life. This divine power is manifested in the first reading through the Israelites who were extremely humiliated and were compared to open graves. Despite all odds, these people will rise again by God's mighty deeds and intervention. In the gospel, the power of God was manifested in Christ, who raised his friend Lazarus to life, who died for already four days and in the tomb. With the passage of this gospel, the liturgy of the words today inspires us to adhere to Jesus Christ with a convinced and enthusiastic faith. For Jesus is the Lord of life, he is the Son of God and the promised Messiah. The divine power of God, as St. Paul expressed in the second reading, is and will be manifest in all the faithful through the Holy Spirit, who will regenerate them into the life of God's children. And at the end of time, he will vivify our mortal bodies and enable it to participate in the glory of the risen Christ. Dear friends in Christ, gradually, the Lenten season is approaching each epilogue, that is, the celebration of the mystery of the resurrection of Christ. In the first reading, we see Prophet Ezekiel's interpretation of the vision of the Valley of Dry Bones, which was a battlefield and later restored to life. The passage is full of symbols. The bones are identified with Israel in exile, and the resurrection of the bones points to Israel's restoration from Babylonian exile to their land. Furthermore, the passage shifted from dry bones to graves. I will open your graves and raise you from your graves. The reference to graves is suggestive of the fact that already at the time of Ezekiel, there was a gradual emergence of the expectation of general resurrection at the last day. We see this in Isaiah chapter 26 verse 19. This expectation was later developed by the apocalyptic literature. However, in our present passage, the language of the future hope points to Israel's return from exile. Indeed, it is likened to resurrection from the grave. At the heart of this figurative resurrection is God's action, who will bring his people to newness of life and will put his spirit in them. Therefore, in this passage, we see the two levels of resurrection, the restoration of his people and the eschatological resurrection of the dead. The episode of today's gospel indeed not only reveals the divinity of Jesus, but also his humanity. For Jesus wept for the death of his dear friend Lazarus, and he manifested the sentiment of friendship towards Mary and Martha. Through this miracle, Jesus manifested himself as true God and true man. The symbol in the prophecy of Ezekiel became a reality in the case of Lazarus. He was a real man who was living in Bethany with his sisters. He felt sick and died. When Jesus arrived, Lazarus had stayed four days already in the tomb. This period in the Jewish tradition and mentality is a period suggestive of a definitive end. But Jesus went to the tomb and called Lazarus out. Indeed, it is true that while the experience of Lazarus is a reality show of the symbolic narrative of Ezekiel, more still, it refers to another superior reality, the passion, death, and resurrection of Christ. First, it was a symbol of liberation and participation to a joyful life in the land God promised to his people. And again, it is a real and historical passage from death to life. This passage from death to life adopts new and insuperable consideration in Christ, who, dying, won victory over death 
and regain life forever. With this miracle, Jesus intends to anticipate the great event of his passion and death. Indeed, what happened in the case of Lazarus for himself alone, the resurrection of Jesus accomplishes for all humanity. His death overcomes the death of man, and his resurrection is a pledge of the resurrection of every man. The evangelist placed the event of the raising of Lazarus at a crucial position in the ministry of Jesus. In fact, it occasioned Jesus' last journey to Judea and Jerusalem, and the resurrection of Lazarus sets in motion the events that will lead to the crucifixion of Jesus. The placing of this event at this time in the mission of Jesus reveals that Jesus goes to his death as the resurrection and the life. As such, through this miracle, Jesus attracted the attention of the Jewish leaders who started plotting and planning for his execution. It is one of the main reasons for the death and for the death and crucifixion of Jesus in the fourth gospel. Prior to this miracle, Jesus had raised the daughter of Jairus in Luke chapter 8 and the son of the widow of Nine in Luke chapter 7. Though in the Old Testament, Elijah and Elisha raised people from the dead. We see this in the first book of Kings chapter 17 and in the second book of Kings in chapter 4. But nowhere has it been recorded that someone was raised after four days. This makes this miracle of today's gospel extraordinary and unique. The miracle of the resurrection of Lazarus was a real event. Furthermore, the miracle of the resurrection of Lazarus is indeed a manifestation of the final destiny of every believer. For Jesus says, whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. He will not die forever. This miracle therefore confirms that faith triumphs over death. The evangelist on his part, through this gospel narrative, wants to lead us to adherence to Christ through a convinced and matured faith as exemplified in the dialogue between Jesus and Martha. As we can see, faith requires generally a progressive development, a gradual maturity. It is a journey. And we can see this in the person of Martha, the sister of Lazarus, who said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Martha is still uncertain about the identity of Jesus. If she had known Jesus' identity, she could have known that the miracle can be realized with or without the physical presence of Jesus. Indeed, sometimes, beloved in Christ, we are like matter that conjugate the verb of our faith and hope in the past, if you had been here. Jesus, of course, is always present. Not only that, even when he assures Martha that her brother will rise again, she instead conjugated the verb of her faith in the remote future. I know he will rise again at the resurrection of the last day, on the last day. Once again, she has not understood who Jesus is, except when Jesus declared vehemently, I am the resurrection and the life. And he assured her that whoever believes in him, even if he dies, will live again. Then Martha added, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. Afterwards, she ran and gave the message of hope to her sister Mary. The Master is here. These words are replete with hope. They not only affirm the name of Jesus as the Emmanuel, but also his identity and mission as the ever-present Savior. And no doubt, the presence of the Master was felt. His presence changed everything. His presence restored hope and vivified life. Finally, matter arrived at the understanding of who Jesus is. Because faith is a step-by-step -step journey. However, we are called to embark on this journey in order to avoid the risk of remaining in doubt or in uncertainty. Beloved in Christ, at the peak of that episode, after praying, Jesus said in a deep voice, Lazarus, come out. And indeed, in the same manner, the same words of Jesus are redirected to each and every one of us in our different situations. 
Jesus is saying to you, come out. Come out of your tomb. Come out of your bondage. From whatever that is keeping you in bondage, from whatever that is not allowing you to become who Jesus wants you to be, his worst reekos, unbind him, let him go free. May you be unbound so that you will celebrate your freedom as God's children. If Jesus can heal and resurrect a decomposing body, there is no situation in the world that he cannot change, for he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The resurrection of Lazarus above all is a revelation of what happens presently, here and now, in the spiritual realm. In each and every one of us, there is a symbol of new life of grace that conquers the death to sin. We are oftentimes in the tomb of sin, and Jesus shouts at a loud voice, Come out! At that point, we feel free and are alive once again. Through this episode, we are called to remove the stones at the tombs in which the man of today clothes himself in, the tomb of immorality, the tomb of corruption, the tomb of injustice, the tomb of violence. The list can go on and on. Therefore, in a sense, the resurrection of Lazarus is also our own resurrection. For Jesus calls us out of the tomb to a new life that not even the corporal death can change. Brothers and sisters, Lazarus is called by name, and you too, in baptism, have received the name, because salvation involves you personally. It is you who is coming out of the tomb today, who is coming out from the slavery of sin to the dignity of the Son of God, from the domination of death to life arising from the resurrection of Christ. However, beloved in Christ, Jesus asks us, as he asked Martha, do you believe? And here, Martha did her profession of faith. Yes, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus himself assured Martha, Have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Dearest in Christ, let us believe in him through a matured and convinced faith, so that this promise will be fulfilled in our lives. That is the manifestation of God's glory in us. May his glory manifest in us in every situation and in every circumstance of our existence. May he who raised Lazarus raise our fallen world. May his voice continue to resound and re-echo in our different situations. You too, come out, be free. Amen. Do not panic, for the master is still here. And may the mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.